Hello everyone, welcome back to the land of Kakiak. So today I just thought I would actually do um, a McGuffey's centered, you know, language arts routine that we do at our house. Um, I shared with you this the other day. I'll try to find that video and link it down below, but just my introduction to how you can have a program, language arts program based around um, McGuffey and McGuffey materials. So um, this, the cover of it looks like that. So we've got William, he's a second grader, and today we're using the uh, McGuffey's second eclectic reader. We are on, he's a level two, right? So we're gonna start with reading and he's just gonna open it up. He's been reading, let's see, on the tiger, right? So the first thing it says to do is to student reads Oops, we're on Wednesday, sorry. Review phonics cards, preview section and passage. So all his phonics cards are um, mastered, so I'm not making him review them at this point, but we are going to read and review the preview section here, right? And then he'll read the passage, which is the reading passage. There's kitties around here. Okay, <laughs> all right, Will, here we go. Lesson 32. All right, and go ahead and we'll read those Words up at the top, the previewed words. Ready? Lion, body, stripes, dial, delight, test, uh, uh, officers, whiskers. Good. And why is officers, why does that C say S? Because there's an E under it, uh, behind it. That's right. So it softens. Good. What about in the word giant? Why come, how come it doesn't say giant? Because, because there's an A. Mm -mm, that's oh, there's an I that's right, right there. So it softens the G. That's right. If there's an E, I, or Y after G's or C's, they're softened, right? Okay, so now move down, and then when you're all done reading, I will give you the magnifying glass to look at the picture. What's the title? The Tiger. Okay, go ahead. The Tiger is a great, a giant cat. He goes over the ground by making bounds or springs on af one after another. Their tent. It played about to the daylight of not daylight. Delight Good. of all who saw it. Yeah. Why is it? Why do we say it D? How do we know that E is long? Because there's a consonant closing it. Nope. That would make it a short vowel. Let's look at it a little bit closer. How many vowels do you hear in delight? Um, but what? D two. Two. So there's two, also two what? Um, syllables, right? Syllables. Okay, so delight. Now, why does it say D? So this is the first syllable, D E. Why does it say D and not D? Because there's no um, consonant closing it off. Right. So what kind of syllable does that make it? Open. There's no open. And we know open syllable vowels are usually? Closed. Uh, oh, no. Long or short? Long. Long. What is the long sound of E? Um, E. E. So that's D light. For it to be E, to be a short E, it would have to be a closed syllable and it would be del -ite. Delight. That's a totally different word, right? It's not even yeah. a word. But is delight a word we know? Yeah. Yeah, delight. And what does delight mean? Um, like, like afternoon. No, but I see you're thinking about the word, the, the part of it that says light, the base word light. It played about to the delight of all who saw it. What do you think that means? Um, uh, that the sun's going down? <laughs> no, think about the whole word. It played, or the whole sentence, it played about, right, the kitten, it played about to the delight of all who saw it. Do you think people, how do you feel when you see a kitten playing around? I'm happy. Yeah. 
So that's what they're saying here. It played about to the happiness of all who saw it, or the delight, the amusement. Yeah, so or the love. So people liked it. So if you delight in something, that means you really like it, okay? All right, go ahead, next page. I think you're almost done with this one. Which bond? Mm -mm. Broke the chain, which... Which What does O-U say? Bow, bound. Bound it. it. Do you want bound? They've used bound two different ways. Before they said that tigers bound, right, and leap, and it's kind of the way they run. This yeah. kind of bound means what? Break. No, they broke the chain which bound it. That If you're bound, that means tied up or held fast, right? So she broke the chain that was holding her kitten. That That's what that kind of bound means. And then means. it tied up. It then turned to the door. Then, then turning. turning to the door of the tent, she dashed away as suddenly as she had come. Cool. Very, very good, son. I thought such an exciting story, really. Okay, ready? We're going to do your comprehension check-in. Okay? All right, so I'm going to ask him a couple of questions off our comprehension check-in. He's still, I'm, we're doing the blue ones and the bookmarks. So I'll ask him, do we know the setting? Do we know the setting of this story? So setting means the what? The, um, where and where and when. Where and when, if you know them, right? Yeah. Okay, so what do we know? Do we know the where? Yeah, in the tent. Part of it takes place in the tent, yeah. And there's a little bit of a clue to what part of the world. What's that clue? India. We think that it might be India. Uh, but what was the clue in the story? Uh, they, they are... A tiger. Yeah, where do uh, tigers live? In Africa. No, Asia. Oh, Asia. Yeah. So we thought it's they've got to be somewhere in Asia. And, you know, we know that British officers and stuff were definitely in India. But they could have been in, in another part of Asia where there's tigers. Okay, so, and we know these books take place in the past, because these books are old, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's probably over 100 years ago that this, you know, well over 100, maybe 150 years ago, that the story is supposed to take place, because they write it um, like it happened just a few years ago, they said, right? But we have to consider when the story was actually written, right? Okay, and so we know the where, we know for sure in a tent... Somewhere in Asia, the when is in the past, right? And let's see what else do we need to know. And then what about characters? What are some characters in the... What's the main character? The we, tiger. The tiger, I would say, yeah. So uh, what tiger? Do you mean the mom tiger? Yeah. Okay. What other characters are there? The American officers. The officers. Well, it said English. Oh, you're right. I forgot. Okay, show me that. Where did it say that? Uh, right. A few years ago, some English, English. officers. I see. That's what I thought. Eng Very good. You're a good detective. So yeah, they're English. So that means they're not American. They're British. British. Right. Very good. So we have some British officers. Officers means they're in the army, army, right? Or some kind of armed forces. Good. And probably anything, any anybody else? The mama tiger, the officers, and the kitty, and the kitten. Very good. Okay, so let's see what else we have on here. Could you summarize in order what happened? So remember, summaries, I just want you to tell me what happened in the beginning, the middle, and the end. No details, just the action, okay? So what happened in the beginning? Um, it told us what they, it described, uh, it described what the tiger looks like. Who did? 
The author. The author. Author. The author, right. Describe tigers and cat kind, kind of yeah. stuff, right? Okay, then what happened in the middle? Um, there were English officers who went hunting. That's a detail. Oh. Um, the, What's the story about? The tiger? Yeah, so what What the English officers had to do with tigers uh, in the middle? Hunt. No, they weren't hunting them. Found. Yeah, what did they find? A tiger kitten. Good. And what did they do with it? They put a collar on it. That's a detail. Oh, 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 oh. They kept it. Where'd they keep it? In their tent. Good. So it starts out with the author telling us a little bit about tigers and cats. Yeah. Then English officers find a tiger kitten yes. and take it back to their tent with them. Yeah. Then what happens at the end? Um, the mother. Yes. Why like, a like, tiger? What's the word they gave for her? The mother. Tigress. Tigress. They called her a tigress. The that's how you knew she. That's how we knew it was the mother and not the father, right? Because they said S. The okay. tigress uh, mother um, went into the tent and got her baby. Ran out. Good job. Okay, let's put it all together. So first, the author, author wrote about a tiger. Told us about tigers. Then um, English officers. English officers, and then find find a kitten. And and the mother and and what do they do with it? And they take it back to their tent. Yeah. And lastly, the... Um, tiger's mother um, took her baby and then ran out. She came, yeah. Then the tigress comes and takes her baby back. Yeah. Good job. That's a summary. Just beginning, middle, and end. We'll keep working on that one. Good job. Okay. Okay, that was a good little brain exercise, right? Okay, so today is Wednesday. Let me see. So he did the preview and read the passage. We did his comprehension questions. Um, so teacher points out previously shown grammar item and asks student to identify. So we're kind of bridging into, if you want to just be doing oral grammar here. Let's just take a look and see if there's anything in here that's worth looking at. Okay, well, I noticed right away, I did notice while we were reading that I saw, what is this? Can you read this word? A day. Days? Days. So you read the whole sentence. When? When? Coming? Coming home from their day's sport, they found a little tiger kitten. What's special about how they wrote this word days? What does that mean, days? In that, that, that was more than one day. No. That would not, that would be just be D-A-Y-S. And they're saying from their days sport. Oh. What other kind of S's are there? What's it telling us? This apostrophe S is telling us what about the sport? The S is short? No. So this is called the possessive S. Do you remember that? Uh, uh, yes. And it's telling us that the sport belongs to the day. Okay, the day. If I said this is Will's book, I would say Will apostrophe S book. That means the book belongs to Will. Will. Yeah, so we probably need to review possessive S's. That gives me a little clue on what to have him work on, right? There wasn't too much else that was like very that we've like talked about before. Hey, William, can you find see this one? The kitten pulled at the chain and tried to break away. What is and? What kind of word is and? Um, that means uh, something else is happening. 
It's a conjunction word. It's joining yeah. two thoughts, right? The kitten pulled at the chain and tried to break away, right? Yeah. It's joining those two thoughts about breaking away and pulling on the chain. Conjunction, con, means? Coming together. Yeah, coming together. We're with. Okay, so let's use those clues as we move on. I'll, when we... I'll show you how to use this because since he we reviewed that but he didn't really have a good grasp on either of those concepts honestly we lost a, I feel like we did draw lost some of our steam over uh, our little Christmas break so it's okay we may have to do a little bit more review this month no big deal okay so I did point that out today and I am gonna just make a note to myself um, that I pointed out the possessive S, right? I'm sorry, possessive. And um, I pointed out and as a conjunction, right? All right, and then you he's gonna do, he's up to six lines of um, copy work. So I'm just gonna get that out for him. And if you want to, you can use the magnifying glass to Look at that cool tiger picture if you want. No, thanks. I know we looked at it the first time we read it, but like, I'm obsessed with these drawings. They're so good. Look at the detail. Like we even noticed, you know, there's like playing cards on the floor because the this officers are in their playing cards in their tent yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and so I, much good detail. I think I there's the authors or the author, the artist signed it at the bottom. I think I see like little like rocks. Let's see what do we see over here. I think they're right. Rocks. Point it towards the sun. You turn it towards the windows. So I can see better. It's still too dark. Yeah, and they're they're two big rocks. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you're right. I think they put something at the base to help up hold up. This is their tent pole. It's holding it up in the middle. Holding right. the whole tent thing up. Okay. We'll mark that one. So I think I may have you read that one one more time, maybe next time. Okay. Um, so we're moving into today's copy work. This is copy work from yesterday, or the last time we did it. T today is the 18th. I'm just gonna date. So you've got one, two. For some reason, you've already done this one. I don't know why. One, two. So I guess go down to three four, five, six. So do these two and stop here, okay? So I want you to use your very, very best handwriting. And when you are done, tell me and I will check it for you, okay? Here you go. Mm -hmm. All right, so William finished his copy work, his six lines for today. He did use a pen, even though I prefer him not to. Anyway, so you can just see, I just went over it with them. We went over his lines and I just made, kind of pointed out things that were good and things that we needed to practice a little bit. So he, um, so we talked about that and he's gonna have to practice his, do like a line of S's. Um, so we're probably just gonna work on that together later. But right now, so I'm back over to my Wednesday checklist and um, I've checked his stuff. So now we're going to move on to grammar locate a grammar focus item in the copy work and highlight and it's okay to consult those grammar flashcards that we may have made earlier in the week right and weekly spelling packets the last thing that we do okay so locate a grammar focus item in copy work and highlight teacher checks so what we identified kind of we i was going over a review off of our grammar check-in bookmarks and it looks like he was still a little bit fuzzy on the difference between possessive S's and plural S's. Um, he also didn't know what a conjunction was, but I'm probably just gonna pick one item and I think I'm gonna focus on the possessive S versus plural S because that is more of a reading, that's gonna affect his reading comprehension more and like spelling and stuff. Okay, so what I have here is I have some um, highlighters. There's no possessive S's in today's six lines that he did. So I'm gonna go to my grammar book. 
my Usborn Illustrated Grammar and Punctuation. And we will take a look in there and we may make a special card um, for today to add to our grammar flashcards. Okay, so to um, look into the possessive S a little bit more, we looked up apostrophes right here. Uh, hey, Will, what, did you, what do you always call apostrophes? Uh, flying uh, commas. Flying commas? <laughs> yeah, it does look like a flying comma. So apostrophes, that flying comma, right, have two different roles. They are used in shortened words, which we call, do you remember? We smush two words together, yeah. and a couple letters pop out. We call those contractions. contractions. Yes. To show that letters have been left out. So whatever letters popped out when we smushed them, we put a apostrophe there. Yeah, that's how you know where they were. They are also used in possessives to show who or what something belongs to. Right? Right. So we're talking about the possessive S. So we'll skip over the contractions for now. We've talked about this before, but let's talk about possessives, okay? When you put an apostrophe after someone's name, it shows that something belongs to him or her. This kind of apostrophe is called a possessive. What, do you know what it means to possess something? Um, to put two words together. No, if you possess something, you own it. Oh. So you, do you possess that shirt you're wearing? Yes. Yes. That's why it's Williams with an apostrophe shirt. S shirt. Because William possesses the shirt, right? You can use a possessive to show that something belongs to a person, an animal, or a thing, right? To form a possessive for a singular noun, that's just one thing, right? One person, place, thing, animal, or idea. You usually add an apostrophe followed by the letter S. So they give an example of this book. Finding King Milo's temple. Whose temple was it? The King Milo's. Yes, King Milo's. That apostrophe S is showing that. And then underneath it, it says, an explorer's story. So whose story was it? Explorers. Explorers. Now, what would it look like if we took out the apostrophe and it's just, it just had an S on the end? Oh, say the same thing. It would, it would sound the same, but it would change the meaning. It wouldn't mean like one explorer that something belongs to them. It, explorers, with an S on the end, is... A plural, right? Which means what? Yeah. Plural means more than one of something. Wow. Remember, there's singular. That means one and plural, more than one. Yeah. So explorer is singular. Explorers is plural. And explorers with a possessive S means one explorer that owns or possesses something, right? In this case, it's his. What does the explorer own? Um, the tempo. Look at it. Another story. Uh, the king on the temple, right? The king. Temple. So there are times when there's no apostrophe needed. Possessives, there's like whole words that are possessive, like hers, its, right? They have an S on the end, but they don't need the apostrophe. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it already shows possession. So the cat is cleaning its whiskers, and the red boots are ours. They have S's, but the whole word is possessive. It doesn't need the apostrophe. So to form possessives, if the noun is singular, add an apostrophe plus the letter S, such as Justin Scooter. If the noun ends in the letter S, you still add an apostrophe plus S. Buses, right? Buses, wheels. If the noun is plural and ends in the letter S, add an apostrophe after the S, right? The girls skates the baby's toys. See that? If yeah. the noun is plural and doesn't end in an S, add an apostrophe plus the S. Mice's, whiskers, children's, boots. That's a lot of rules to remember, right? right. 
So we're going to simplify this and just do some what we are mostly seeing in in our McGuffey readers right now. So let's make a new let's make a new grammar card together. You make one and I'll make one, right? Yeah. And you can copy off of me what I write and make your own. And then we'll go back, we get add some color to it. Okay, so we just made um, our little grammar flashcards. And we compared the plural S to the possessive S. So I was able to fit a little bit more into my card. <laughs> But uh, Will's got the most um, common uh, things down, right? He's got just an S that you add on to a noun to make it plural, or an apostrophe S. And then we have an example sentence, and we gave a short definition. So plural S just means there's more than one. A possessive S shows ownership. He said he would he understood the word ownership better than he understood the word possession. So we went with ownership. I just... I did my thing here. So we just sat here and worked together, right? And mom made one and he made one. And I put in a couple more um, rules in there, like the ES, if the um, noun ends in an S and it's plural. If a noun ends in S, you put the apostrophe S. If a noun is plural and ends in S, you just put an apostrophe at the end. And if a noun is plural and does not end in S, it's apostrophe S, such as children, then it's apostrophe S. Yes. Anyways, so now what we would do with these is actually I'm going to put them together. Luckily, both these things start with P because I like to put them in his tin alphabetically. So you can see he's got a grammar. So I just, I have his, this recipe tin where I keep all his um, flashcards. So we've got his math flashcards that we're currently working on. And then in the back, I've got his grammar section. So I'm just going to stick this in there for right now and I'll make sure it's in there in alphabetical order later. And then, so we are done with grammar for the day. So I can check off. We looked, we, there wasn't one in there, but we looked it up and we made a new flashcard. I checked the flashcard. So the next thing for language arts is spelling. So we do these weekly spelling packets and I'll just show you that. It is spelling time. So I have built their spelling program around the McGuffey's Eclectic Spelling Book from the revised editions as well. We love this book. I've made a lot of videos on um, my spelling program and um, our spelling folder and um, I've gone through all the activities. Um, and I'll just link everything for you below so we won't go through a whole spelling day as well because I've gone through multiple things. I've got his flashcards back here. He's on lesson 12 right now. And we just do this throughout the week. That's kind of like resources and his fill-in sentences. And then this is his weekly packet with all of his um, activities that he does. So again, like I'll just link that down below in the videos I made on that if you're interested more in his spelling program in more detail. But spelling for us um, really, it's, it's spelling really is kind of like vocabulary and spelling at this stage. And then we switch over just to like vocabulary. Um, maybe in like sixth grade technically is when I would like to just be more like kind of be through all the spelling rules kind of stuff and phonics stuff and just be doing vocabulary as the um, subject versus spelling. You know, we just start focusing a lot heavily. Like we, we do get into meaning in our spelling program, but you know, when we switch over to vocabulary, we get more into, you know, language of origin and meaning and stuff like that. So that would be the next step up, but he is in spelling right now. It's going really great. Um, I'm working on Kind of putting together a little spelling boot camp and i'll share that with you guys when i have it figured out but yeah so once we do that we will be done with our wednesday um language arts block okay have a good one